Was that Zoom conversation? I think that was actually one of the best ones. I loved hearing from the guys in Asia Pacific. Yeah. We are joined here with none other than Farah. Come on, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us Amazing to on be this here. show. We have your bio right here. Um, you are Mayor of London candidate in the 2021 elections, running as an independent candidate, entering the political arena as a candidate for the very first time. Absolutely. Um, you the were, Lion's Den. The Lion's Den, indeed. And you didn't actually become Mayor of London, mm -hmm. um, but you have continued with a lot of those policies. Um, do you want to just talk about like what were you passionate about, um, what were some of those policies, and what does it look like now for you? I stood because I'm passionate about people, and that's exactly why I stood. I felt like we're not being represented by the people parties. And youth was very important in my full manifesto because youth are the future, but they're not being represented. And frankly, we've let them down. And that's why I wanted to bring change. I wanted to bring community led policies. So when I didn't win, I thought, well, I still want to do these things. I still want change to happen. I still want to help the communities. I spoke to thousands of people and I couldn't let them down. So I decided, you know what? I'm still going to deliver on my manifesto through private funding, but people deserve change. And the politicians aren't doing it. Political parties, they don't care. So we the people have to do it. So that's why I decided, okay, let me go find manifesto. What's the most important? Uh, quite a few of them are youth projects. And I decided, okay, let's do this. And I've been very fortunate by the grace of God um, that I have actually got the private funding now to deliver these projects, but for the whole of the UK. Not just wow. London. Wow. wow that that, that's God's hands working. Wow. Mm -hmm. How are you listening to Gen Z's in this time? Like, how are you getting their input and finding out what they feel that they need? I love to get out there on the street and talk and listen. I will go sit down, you know, with a stranger. I'll be walking. I'll, I'll see someone. I'll just start talking to them. Let's have a coffee. Mm -hmm. I'm really involved. I mentor a lot of youth. I've been mentoring you for many years. And... I just love watching that transformation. And I think when you deal with so many different communities, different races, different nationalities, you really learn the different needs in the communities and how the younger generation is just so neglected. You haven't, there's no money being put into you. If, if anything, money's been taken away from your generation. And if we want to see change, we need to start investing back in you. And that's yeah. why it's so important to listen because I want to see a future where you are the ones sitting on those benches, mm. not what we see now. Mm. I'd love to ask, actually, um, a big problem with young people is that they don't trust politicians. And they shouldn't. And, um, and you know, um, I, don't, I don't know you, but to be honest, are you not just going to say what I want to hear? You're going to say, oh, I'm going to listen to you. Like, how can I trust that you're not just saying what? I, I want to hear, so I'll vote for you, and then you'll get in office and you won't do it. And, and that's, that's the exact problem. Not only have youth lost trust, if I talk to the elder generation, they've lost trust in the politicians because that's what they do. They come, mm. they say what you want to hear, and then that's it, they go. Mm. We do not have accountability in politics, and we need to see accountability. And I want to make sure we drive accountability into politics, and that will scare a politician because then they'll be accountable for everything that they say. For example, we've had politicians promise all sorts of things, but the moment they win, silence nothing mm -hmm. and we need to bring that trust back into people people don't vote anymore just because they don't believe you well you're not going to do anything because there's no point in me voting for you so i really feel we need to see political transformation we need to bring change and guess what you have the vote so that means you have the power you're the ones that put those people in those positions mm -hmm. so why not unite use your power use your voice to bring change. Yeah. You're not going to bring change by not voting. Um, going back to what you said about account accountability, how do you think that can be implemented on that politician? The people are the ones with the power, don't forget that. Mm. We put the politicians in those positions, but we have the power. So therefore, we are responsible to ensure and enforce accountability. So that's something that the people need to actually say, you know what, we need accountability now. You know, you see all these petitions. So, for example, if you get 100,000 signatures on a petition, yeah. that means Parliament has to debate that. So that's pretty powerful, right? Yeah. So just imagine what we can actually do with the power that we have. But unfortunately, 
the way the system is, we do not know the power that we have. Mm. So now it's about, again, political transformation. Mm. Let's educate people. Let's let people know what they can actually do together to actually hold our politicians accountable, the political parties accountable. We have political parties who are anti-Semitic, who are racist, who are, you know, filling hatred into communities, who are putting money, much needed money, taking it away from communities and putting it into silly projects. Why are we not doing anything? Why are we not standing up and holding them accountable? Mm. We're letting them get away with it. So we are responsible. Mm. Mm. A lot of politicians can seem quite selfish. So how do you influence your faith into your political views? Do you feel like it's hard to separate faith from politics or do you find them quite easy to integrate into them all? I love to use my faith in everything I stand for because that is who I am. Mm. And for me, I am anchored to Jesus. So I stand, I like to call it in the eye of a storm, anchored to God. So I could have the storm around me, but I'm always in the eye of a storm, anchored to God. And all my policies, everything I am is through God. So I like to let people see that through me. I'm um, something quite interesting when I'm um, I did my leaflet, I obviously had my crucifix and someone said to me, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't have a crucifix. And I said, why? They said, because that will scare people. I said, but that's who I am. And I'm proud to be who I am. And I want people to know who I am because I want to be an example to them that they do not need to be scared of a Christian person. If anything, I have worked with the Jewish community, the Muslim community. I, I even spoke at a synagogue where the rabbi speaks. They invited me to come and speak as a Christian woman in the synagogue and that, that hasn't happened before so it's so incredible when you go on that journey with people but they see that you're there for them you stand for them you're going to fight for them mm. they will welcome you in mm. so i think it's so important be who you are do not try to put your faith separate if that is who you are use that yeah. Farah, how, mm. how do you feel jesus would interact with today's politicians then i think jesus definitely would want us to go back to basics, mm -hmm. humanity. That's what's missing in politics. There's no more humanity. Unfortunately, politics is full of ideologies now. So I think there's too much noise, it's too loud, there's too much arguments. Mm -hmm. Nothing is getting done. They're too busy shouting over each other. Now, thunder does not make the wilderness grow or plants grow, but the rain does. So I feel if you have given been given authority by God, you in a position of power, you need to make sure every word that you use is a raindrop into someone's heart, into their mind, into their soul. So you can flourish them and grow them so they can bring change together. So I think that's so important. Use your voice, but speak with intelligence. I love that. Um... When you started running um, for Mayor London, you know, you came to my door uh, just because I was someone, you know, in church um, and you spoke to me. And the one thing that shocked me was that you were very accessible. And then when I got chatting to you, I found out that actually you've just given your number to everybody. And so listening is very important to you. And one of our key cultures on God Questions is that love listens. Um, tell me, what, how much has listening really played a part in what you do? And why did you give your phone number to everybody? And did anyone text you anything weird? <laughs> I, I thought it was important because leaders aren't accessible mm. and there's always a them and us mm. and I, I want us to actually come together. I think that's so important. I think everyone should be accessible. So that's why I was the most accessible candidate. And yes, I did get all sorts of messages, calls, <laughs> you know, even had WhatsApp available. But what was really great was someone would call the campaign number and they said, oh, I've got a question for Farah. And then they're like, oh, would you like to speak to her? They're like, sorry, what? Like, yeah, would you like to speak to her? And I said, hi, how can I help you? And they're like, is this really you? Wow. Really, this is you? I said, absolutely. And then I would take the time to listen to them. It could be half an hour, an hour, but it was so important. They really appreciated that just to ask a question and just quiz me. I, I, had, I had great conversations. I had people call me and challenge me. And then now they've become my, my greatest friends because they just wow. loved the fact I took the time out and they wanted to be tough with me, but I'm there to answer your questions. I'm not going to hide away. Mm. Politicians hide away. They won't say yes, they won't say no. Mm. So if we want to trust our leaders, they need to answer the questions. Mm. Mm. Awesome.
Do you, say, do you have any encouragement in terms of like young people who want to actually pursue going into politics, basically? I want to encourage any young person, just get involved. Find out what policies are you passionate about? What really, what changes do you want to see? That's really important. What changes do you want to see? What are you not happy with? And that's actually going to give you a form to actually start getting involved in things. First, you can start locally, look at your local community, what's going wrong? What's the council not doing? It could be something silly as just garbage collection, but it all adds up to something. And then start going, you know, looking at London, start looking at the country. You know, we've got a climate crisis right now. You know, we've got knife crime crisis, you know, which you did a fantastic speech on in Parliament. Well done for that. So these are things I want you to get involved. Start understanding what do you care about? And then look at the parties where they align with you and then start volunteering, get involved, start learning. It's so important. I would encourage anyone just start volunteering in your local communities because then you're going to start understanding. Farah, have you got any questions for these young people? I do actually. So if tomorrow you were in parliament or you are an MP, what's the first policy that you would introduce? Mm. Gosh, I know you've got one. You've got so many ideas on you've this. Got so many Come on. Um, I was saying this to Emily earlier that um, I think one thing would be nice to see in terms of young people, if like we're talking about like UK or London, would be like getting the young ones to volunteer. Can I say like when I've been on holiday to America a lot in the summers, young people do voluntary work and it's part of like the system there. As a young person, you have to volunteer. If it's like for two weeks or summer camp or anywhere. So I was saying like getting young people to volunteer because also be good for the CVs and or build them up like how you said you've done 20 years of voluntary work you've seen it for them will be the same thing they could see the situations going on yeah and they could be like actually this is a problem how can i fix this or who can i contact or with my friends what can we do together so yeah i say that's something i would mm, I, I think i just looked in i don't know if there's an actual policy for this but i just think there's not enough women in parliament to be honest i think um you know uh I actually wanted to ask, like, have you found that difficult being a woman in power in parliament? And um, you know, and was that maybe a reason why you struggled in the mayoral campaign, or um, is it something that you think is, you know, becoming easier for women to get into, or is it still the same kind of stigmas? Or what do you think? I personally, I love empowering women, and not enough women stand up. And in parliament, we don't even have a fifty-fifty parliament between men and women. We've never had a woman mayor of London, mm. ever. Mm. So that was something that really encouraged me that we need to see a woman mayor of London. So mm. it actually is something that I do hope it does bring change. For me, I'm very blessed to have God in my life, which gives me the faith and strength that I need. Um, so I never felt intimidated or uh, anything like that because I'm a woman because I know who stands above me mm. Mm. and that's where where my focus is I, I don't look around you know the men around me I'm focused on God I have a mm. great relationship so that's he gives me the power the strength that I need mm. so I would say it's something that we do need to see more of we do need to empower more women like what you did was absolutely brilliant and I really hope that you don't stop keep keep fighting speaking oh, for people yeah. it's so important <laughs> Incredible. Farah, thank you so much thank you for being so inspirational. Thank you for encouraging us mm -hmm. um, and sharing so much. We've loved it. Why don't you give us so a close of prayer? What a blessing. Um, but also, why don't we end this in prayer like we always do? Um, who would like to pray? Yeah,